All right, let's take a look at the fourth FRQ of the AP Physics 2 um, 2025 exam. It looks like this is a diffraction, uh, double slit diffraction issue. Two narrow slits are distance D apart. The screen is a distance L from the midpoints of the slits where L is much bigger than D. When the laser emits a monochromatic light towards the slits, a pattern of narrow, bright, and dark bands is observed on the screen. The centers of the bright bands are A and B are indicated. Three additional bright bands, including the central bright band, are observed on the screen between A and B as shown. Okay, so we have these bright bands here. Student claims that the distance between the center of band A and the center of the central band is smaller when using a laser that emits violet light than when using a laser that emits red light. Indicate whether the student's claim is correct or incorrect. Without manipulating equations, justify your answer by referencing the difference in path length traveled by the light in each slit. So they're kind of giving you a hint on what they want you to be thinking about. So when we have a double slit diffraction, always just think about, you can start with the equations to get you an understanding. Because I right now I don't remember which is which. Like I, offhand, just reading the question, I don't remember if it's gonna be further or smaller or not. I have to start with the equations to start thinking about that path difference. And as well as, so there's kind of two key equations that they give you now in AP Physics 2. And one is whatever the path difference is, for constructive interference, it's m times the wavelength, right? So that's kind of like, that's 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 one of the formulas. Um, and let me pull up the other ones as it's given on the formula sheet. So I pasted in the two equations for the mo that refer to the um, double slit diffraction, right? And so this is this is when we do the small angle approximation, and then this is the relation of the the angle here. It's d sine theta when it comes to that, and and the path difference, and that's the thing you got to think about is the path difference. What's varying there is um, the, the 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 path difference is the difference between, is related from there to there, right? That's what this part, this formula is telling you. It's, it's relating between the angles. So if we, we take a look at the bright band A, for example, we're doing from here to here, that is our theta. And so the sine theta being opposite over adjacent is approximately, if the L's super long, is, a, is about equal to tan theta, which is L over this, which is where we get this formula. So the Y max is gonna be L M lambda over D, okay? And that's the separation, this is the Y max here the difference in the a single bright band for m is equal to one, for m equal one, because if that's the, the next band, or if I think a centers of band a and b, or maybe it's just some integer multiple, it doesn't really matter here. Now what happens with violet light, so violet light has more energy, so violet light has a higher frequency, so the f is higher for that, but remember c is equal to wavelength times frequency, so a higher frequency with the same speed of light means a lower wavelength, so this is gonna go down, and so that means the wavelength's gonna go down means the spacings between them. So he claims that the distance is smaller. So he's correct from our formula here, but we gotta make out the reasoning. And that's because, and, and we gotta talk about the higher frequency. So violet light has a higher frequency. And lower and smaller wavelength. So just establish that length. So it takes a smaller diff path difference for constructive interference. Because remember, our path difference is a multiple of the wavelength. So if I have a smaller wavelength, it takes a smaller path difference for constructive interference. Um, that means that the that the the um, the the angle from here to those points, right? That's where the path difference comes from. It's from there to there is uh, going to be smaller. So the angle, so the angle to the slits can be smaller due to the smaller path difference. And so due to that smaller path difference, then they're not far as far apart. And that makes them not as far apart, not as far apart. 
Okay, derive an expression for the distance between the centers of bands A and B when the light of frequency F is emitted toward the slits. Express your answer in terms of D, L, F, and physical constants as appropriate. Begin your derivation by writing a fundamental physics principle or equation from the reference sheet. So we'll probably use this equation here. So we'll start with D, Y max over L is about equal to M lambda. And that is a fair approximation. So now th this is the kind of the interesting thing is the M, the Y max is to the central band. And I, I'm just trying to figure out this dot if this is a bright band here, or th that's where the destructive interference. So this is m is equal to one. This is m is equal to negative one. So we have to think about that. So it's the m is equal to two because it's two, two bright spots away. So we're gonna solve for the, so, so, so then we have d y max over L is equal to two lambda, but we got to do it in terms of frequency. And we know that C is equal to wavelength times frequency. So the wavelength is equal to C over the frequency. So we can, then we can, um, so make that equal to two C over F. And then you just solve for that Y max spacing. Um, that's going to be two L C over F D. Right? So we're just going to multiply the L up, right? And then divide the D over like that. 2LC over FD. Okay, cool. Indicate whether the expression derived in part B is consistent or with your answer from part A. So part A is it is consistent because if I have a higher frequency, higher F, which is violet light, will increase the denominator. And decrease Y max. Right? And that's it.